The World Darts Championship has come and gone. We got a 16-year-old sensation in Luke Littler reaching the final. And you may be inspired and think, what do I need to do if I want to follow in Luke Littler's footsteps and become a professional dart player? What sort of averages do I need? And I'm going to debunk a lot of myths here and let you know just what you need to be a professional dart player. Now, I was a professional dart player for 11 years, dating back through 2011 on the PDC Pro Tour. Now still traveling on the international circuit. I've seen them all come, I've seen them all go. I've seen generational talents. And what we're going to do, we're going to break it down and debunk those myths. Myth number one. Don't go to Q school unless you're averaging 95 to 100. Bonkers. Absolute bonkers. You do not need to be averaging 95 to 100 in order to go and attend and be successful at Q school. Let's take a look at the players that were successful just last year at Q school. They are the players in green. You'll see. Not one of them having a three dart average of 95 across the Q school campaign. So the fact you need to be there at a 95 plus average, yes, you need to get there and be able to raise it to the 95 and the 100 on occasion, but you don't need to live there. You'll see Adam Hunt was just a point away from his tour card. That's one win away, despite averaging just 83. He's got players in here, 87, 86. It was the same over in Europe as well. You'll see not one player even close to that 95 bracket that is banded around quite often as the Q school minimum. You'll see a 93 being the highest one and that being a standout by quite a few points in regards to those averages so that's number one that's q school debunked now i know what the next thing's going to be okay well that's q school that might be wrong maybe that's what you need on the pro tour incorrect i often see quite often people say you need 100 plus average these days 105 average has been banded round as something you need now to be a successful professional dart player now remember we're looking here at professional dart player. We're not looking at elite who's going to walk everything and win every single title going, be the next Phil Taylor. We're looking at what it takes to be a professional dart player. Professional dart player, by definition, someone who earns a living from the sport. What do you need to earn a living from the sport? Now, 100 average, myth. Not one player on this planet runs at 100 average. Here's your top 32 averages over the last 12 months. You'll see. Gerwin Price is the best player in the world statistically, averaging 98.65. Luke Humphreys, the world champion, the world number one, averages 98.60. So not one player on this planet. Now, yes, they can reach those heights of 105 or 108, but it's not where they live. It's not their regular every single day. Now, if we take a look down a little bit further and we look towards sort of the top 16, this is where now that number of 95 average gets cut off. So when people are talking about you need a 95 average to be able to get through Q school, if you're averaging 95, you're a top 16 player in the world according to statistics. So don't worry too much about those. When we look a little bit further down and we look down towards that sort of 32 cut off position, you'll see when we look at the total top 32, we're still looking at like a 93 average. So if you're averaging around about the 93 mark, you're playing to type of a player that is in the top 32 of the world and will reach that after the end of the sort of two year cycle. So 93 average is towards the top end. So if you want to be successful and be a professional dart player, here's my guidance to you. First of all, the actual specific number of average doesn't really matter too much, whether it's 88, 92, 91, they're all the same because they're in that same block. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. This is where it's going to debunk the myth a little bit. If you want to be a professional dart player, you need to be winning legs in 18 darts or less. Six visits to the board. Now, you're going to need to raise it at times, absolutely. You're going to need to sometimes go up more. You're going to need to go out in 15 or less. You're going to need to go out in under 12. But unless you are winning legs in 18 darts or less, I would suggest to not attempt the PDC at the moment. That means 83 average. That's why Adam Hunt was able to, in that position, get very close to getting his card because he was towards the bottom end. 18 data is that 83 average, which means six visits to the board. 16 darts, 93 average, is still six visits to the board. So it means you're moving into that extra block. So if you're 18 darts or less, you can get up to that top 32 level, but the top 32 players tend to be closer to the 15 dart bracket rather than that six visit, that sort of 16 
to 18 dart bracket. Now, when we look at the players that are sort of around that number 64 position in terms of the PDC rankings, players that are making a living. If you're in the top 64, you should be earning enough now in order to become a professional player. Depending on your own personal living circumstances, you'll probably be prize money-wise around about the £35,000 a year, plus sponsorships, endorsements, and everything else that will come with it. So I would say top 64. And around that area, we're looking roughly 92 to 93 sort of average. So if you want to be a professional player, you don't need to be 95 to 100. Six visits. That's your practice. That's your invisible man. That's what you should be doing on a regular basis. If you're not breaking that 18 dart bracket, you have a chance. That is your cutoff as a guideline to be a professional player. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. I'll catch you soon for some more Edgar TV. Edgar TV.